Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. Today I want to talk a little bit about phishing scams and how you can avoid them. Now a phishing scam is basically when hackers try to lure you and fool you into giving up private information. For example, you could get an email from uh, what looks like your bank and they say, oh, type in your login and your password, your secret code, and it's actually a malicious website that steals your login information so they can log in as you and steal all your money or whatever. So I recently got a, a wonderful example of a phishing scam, and since everyone has been asking me lately, like, is this a valid email? I thought, you know, it's probably time I just do a video specifically on phishing scams. So let's take a look at the example that I got. Okay, so this is the email that I got. The email looks like it comes from Banque Populaire, and it says, Hello, dear client, uh, your account is restricted uh, following a malfunction of your online account. In other words, your financial account is restricted following a malfunction of your online login account, let's say. Uh, please resolve this incident by activating your security pass uh, using the following link. And then there's a link to secure pass, and then here's the little kicker. Uh, by ignoring this notice, you expose yourself to a temporary suspension of your means of payments. Uh, cordially, uh, the bank, supposedly. So before we even look at the link, uh, let's look at the headers of the email. So the subject is uh, Mise à jour secure pass banque populaire, message de notification, uh, update, secure pass update bank populaire message of notification, notification message. This is actually a piss-poor <laughs> subject line. This is your first clue that this did not come from Banque Populaire. If this came from the real Banque Populaire, uh, the subject would, first of all, it would be capitalized correctly, and second, yeah, it wouldn't be... Yeah, that's just horrible. Uh, the next line is from, and the email address is contact-pro at bpce.fr. Well, I know that Banque Populaire's actual website is bankpopular.fr. So right here, this is very suspicious. Now, of course, sometimes what happens is, uh, you know, banks will use uh, email sending services. They'll have a different server. You know, so bpce.fr, could that actually be them? Yeah, it could be. But uh, here I would have to be paying attention to when I normally get emails from the bank, uh, do they normally come from this email address or not? But even if I don't know that, this is kind of fishy. The date, of course, well, that doesn't really tell us anything. And then, of course, you have the two. Uh, in this case, it's one of my 16 different email addresses. And this right here is a big clue. Um, actually, there, there were two clues that made me realize that this was not at all a real, uh, a real email. Uh, the first reason I knew that it was a phishing scam is because I don't have an account with Bon Popular. <laughs> uh, the second thing is that the email address that they use to send me this email... Uh, that is actually a business account email, and I do not manage the banking for that business, and so I would never actually receive a banking email, especially from this bank, because uh, the bank doesn't, the business doesn't use that bank, I don't use that bank, and I never use that business address for any kind of banking. So, in this case, it was pretty obvious to me that it was a phishing scam. Okay, so that's a big clue right there, but let's assume that most people will have, you know, one or two email addresses, and so, of course, yeah, you'll use the same email address for everything, so that might not tell you something. And let's ignore for a moment the fact that I don't have an account with this large French bank, <laughs> and let's assume that I do, and okay. Well, we still have the pretty wonky, poorly written subject line, and we still have the strange from address. Then, of course, we have the emotional hook down here. You know, by ignoring this notice, you expose yourself to a temporary suspension of your means of payments. That's the emotional hook where you're supposed to freak out, crap your pants, and then quickly click the link. So, okay, before you click the link, if you think this might be a real message, uh, just hover over the link here with your cursor, and you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner the link that it goes to, which is ahajerlop.com. That's most definitely not Banque Populaire. <laughs> but let's click on it anyway. What comes up when we click on it? We get this website. Uh, this is just a screenshot, but... And notice that instead of ahajerlop.com, it's taken us to labankpopular.com. Um, now, if I were to actually go onto Google and search for Banque Populaire, I would get a nice link to the real bank login page, and that would look something like this. 
And as you can see up here, bankpopulaire.fr. So that would tell me, wait, no, this is not the right website for the bank. And of course, if you compare these two, this is the fake login site. Real. Fake. Real. So obviously they look fairly similar, but going back to the fake one here, there are two clues here that should tell you, uh, no, this is very bad. The first is that aharjerlamp.com went to labankpopular.com, which is not the correct URL for Bank Populaire. And the second thing is that you notice here it says not secure. Um, yeah, no bank that has online banking or even that doesn't have online banking would have an insecure website. So those are two huge clues right there that you should not enter your personal information in here. And furthermore, when you go to the real Bank Populaire's website, one of the first things you notice is this security notice here that says, be vigilant if you are contacted by telephone, email, SMS, or chat. Never communicate your confidential codes, security codes received by SMS, or your passwords, even to cancel a payment. So obviously, this is the real bank's website, and right here, they're basically telling their customers, ah, uh, yeah, there's, there's phishing scams going around, don't click it, don't enter your information. So there you go. If it does look like it's your real bank, uh, first you check the email, you look at the, the subject line, you look at the wording of the email, you look at who it's from, the domain name of, of who it's from. If it's not from, you know, if you get an email that's supposed to be from Google and it comes from, you know, billybob.net, well, it's obviously not from Google. Uh, of course, from addresses can be faked, but an official email from an official site or agency or bank or some whatever kind of institution they're obviously going to use their own domain to send uh, the email to you. Uh, and then if you do uh, think that maybe the email looks okay, you know, the, the subject, the from, the two email addresses, one that you actually use for banking, you read the content of the email and you go, okay, well, this is a little bit wonky. For example, in this email, the way they worded like, oh, your, your, your financial account is restricted because of a problem with your online login. And it's like, no, that, that wouldn't happen. If there was a problem, the bank would contact me and tell me, but they're not going to say, here, click here and fix it for me. Because if I have to go fix the bank's online banking problems, I'm going to go find another bank. So that's not very logical. They might notify me that there was a problem, uh, there was a data leak, or the service would be down, or blah, blah, blah. But then they would tell me, oh, we're handling it, don't worry about it, your data is safe, or whatever. So... Um, you kind of have to think about this stuff just a little bit, but if you pay attention to the headers, the wording, and then finally that link, you know, hover over the link. If it, you know, if it doesn't go to the proper website, don't click it. If you do click it, uh, pay attention to the URL uh, because the website can look very, very genuine, as I've just demonstrated. And if you type your information in, you're pretty much screwed. So, yeah. It's not very difficult to avoid phishing scams. You just have to kind of pay a little extra attention and keep your wits about you, and especially do not fall for uh, these emotional hooks. One last note is, for example, with my real bank, uh, I have online banking, and uh, nowadays what they do is they'll never send me an email and say, you know, do this. They don't even send me notices. They will send me a message, either email or SMS or whatever, and they'll say, log into your account to download this document. We've sent you a special important notice, right? And I have to actually then go to either the, the uh, online banking app that I have on my phone, or I have to go to, uh, you know, on the internet in my web browser. I have to log in. I have to do 27-step verification. Uh, I have to get a secret code on my phone so that I can log into the website on my computer, blah, blah, blah. And once I've confirmed to them that I am actually Scotty, then I'm logged into my account and I can read the notice. And this serves two purposes. The first is that they will never actually communicate uh, information to me without first verifying that I am who I say I am. But I'm also reassured because I've just gone through this complicated login process. So I'm also assured that, yes, in fact, I am logging into their bank and not to some podunk website, you know, some that created by hackers or something. So, right, that's how to avoid phishing scams. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.